Open heart third year, chapter 11, wedding bells. Hopefully you're all having a nice day. You wake up in a luxurious hotel room to warm sunshine, tropical bird song, and the soft pound of distant surf. It almost feels like I'm still dreaming. You push open the windows and take in the beautiful view, breathing in the ocean breeze. You sigh contentedly. I can't believe I'm here. I don't want to waste a second of my time in paradise. Greening, you hit the shower, fish out your brand new beach look, and slip it on. Damn, Casey, you're looking fire. Feeling more cheerful than before, you head down to the lobby to meet your friends a spring in your step. As you enter the lobby, you see your roommate, Shraff, clustered at the front desk, chatting excitedly. Ethan is standing near the entrance to the terrace restaurant, looking over a menu. Casey, over here! We were just wondering about you! As you walk over to join them, all your friends gawk at your new, beachy look. Oh wow, Casey. That looks amazing. You've outdone yourself. I told you a new swimsuit would be a good investment. If you're going to be in a hot place, may as well be hot, right? You make it uh, sound like Casey isn't always hot. But look, uh, that look takes it up to 11. <clears throat> you gotta do Edinburgh crew proud, right? Bryce spent the night with friends, so he's swinging by later. The rest of us were here just discussing what we might do this morning. I think I've con convinced Sienna to join me for paddleboarding. Way more interesting than lying by the pool all day. Clearly you're doing it wrong. I still say all of you are sleeping on tide pools. I don't know how I'm the only one recommending the beach on in Hawaii. While you're musing on the options, Ethan clears his throat from behind you. <clears throat> well, although sound enjoyable, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the hotel as a gorgeous terrace and world-class Kana coffee. Dude, you just sold me. I don't give a shit about the rest of the people. Let's go. Those beans are only grown here in Hawaii, right? I've heard Kana's pretty next level. It is. It's hard to get good kana outside of Hawaii. I figure there are worse ways to spend the day than sampling some mountain sunshine. Listen, dude. I told you. Kana coffee. He sold me. If the resident coffee snob of Edenbrook says it's good, then I have to try it for myself. Wise choice. Come on. I've asked for a table with a good view of the ocean. Waving to the others, you follow Ethan to the cafe. Never get between me and a good cup of coffee. You follow Ethan under the terrace where your tables, views of the beach, the beach, or the ocean, the beach, and the, yeesh, the diff, d distant cliffs. I figured that if I was going to be spending my time in paradise drinking coffee, it's only fitting to have a view of paradise. Speaking of views, you certainly dressed for vacation. Ethan, only you would spend your time in paradise drinking coffee. <laughs> what do you have against it? Mm, you only say that because you haven't tasted Kona. Trust me, you'll consider it worth the flight by itself. Is it that good? Let me put it this way, I specifically left empty space in my luggage so I'd have room to carry back as much Kona as I could buy. And will you be sharing this bounty with the team? Oh, you can piss off. This bounty's ours. Only if you deeply impress me. The waitress comes to take your orders, and soon she returns with two steaming mugs of fragrant coffee. So, what sort of taste sensation should I be expecting here? Actually, I don't know. I've never actually drank it before. Now I want to. With good Kona, you can usually taste brown sugar, milk, chocolate, honey, and a hint of fruit. Sometimes a bit of floral flavor, or black cherry as well. Whoa, for real? Yes. So long as you drink it black. Milk and sugar would just dilute the experience. Hmm. You're the expert, so black it is. You cautiously take a sip of the black Kona, and your eyes widen as rich flavors cover your tongue. Oh wow, that is amazing cup of coffee. It's sweet and mild. I see why you said it didn't need milk. 
Frankly, I have yet to meet a coffee bean that isn't uh, better to drink by itself than with milk and sugar. So he keeps mentioning the sugar, yet she said it tasted sweet. No offense, but I don't think a coffee bean will ever be sweet without a little sugar. What about cappuccinos? Alright, I'll make a special exception for those. Oh my god. I wonder what would happen if you made a cappuccino with Kona. Can you imagine? I'm pretty sure it would count as a dessert drink. But I'm also sure that mankind isn't ready for such decadence. <laughs> what makes it so different from other coffees? I believe it's the volcanic soil. Many of the best coffees the world ever over are grown in it. The best Kona is never burnt, just lightly roasted to bring out the flavor. And the hotel does some of the best Kona I've ever tasted. Smiling, you take another sip, enjoying the rich, light flavors, and not to mention the stunning view. So this must feel more uh, of the same for you, huh? Minus the setting, obviously. If you're referring to my recent suspension, I'll admit that I did spend a lot of time catching up on some serious coffee drinking. But it turns out vacation is a better flavor enhancer than waiting on for the phone call from the hospital board. He reaches across the table to take his hand, your hand in his, squeezing lightly. Especially since I get to share paradise with the person I care about most in the world. How about you? This is the first real time off you've had in a while, I imagine. Yeah, I don't get much chance for vacation these days, that's for sure. Hmm. Now you're spending your vacation time drinking coffee and with your boss. I'm flattered, to be honest. Hey, after the year we've had, a little downtime on a sunny terrace drinking coffee is exactly what this doctor ordered. Agreed. Now that this particular cup of coffee is done, perhaps we should order another. Hmm. I think I should go for another cup of Kona. Mm, if you're not going to share your private Kona stores when we get home, then I want to enjoy every sip I can while I'm here. Mm, to be honest, I feel the same way. Like I said, being in a place like this is a real flavor in answer. Waitress brings you both another cup of Kona, and you sip the second one more slowly, humming in pleasure at the rich, chocolatey, honey-rich taste on your tongue. Is it possible to fall in love with a coffee? Look around... In a setting like this, I think it's possible to fall in love with anything or anyone. Taking the glimmering blue ocean, the glorious splashes of the floral color with the, from the hibiscus around the terrace, and the soft sounds of the tropical bird song. You're not wrong. Sighing happily, both of you sip your Kona, and the glorious flavor is mixing with the perfect Hawaiian morning. We get it, someone at Pixelberry went on vacation. Thanks for sharing. After a wonderful morning, you head back into the side of the hotel. Just in time to see Bryce stroll up in the lobby, decked out in his swim trunks. Decked out in swim trunks. Those two don't even work together. Bryce, how's it going? Did you have a good time with your friends? Sure did. Man, it's been too long since I've seen him. Though I gotta say, I think it's uh, even better seeing you in that swimsuit. You like it? He's benching a tent by now, you know he is. Most guys do when they act like that. That's an understatement. It's uh, good you didn't see my, or me, my buddies, or they would have mooned you over so much that they wouldn't uh, have noticed me. So, what did I miss? Mm, does grabbing Kona coffee on the terrace with Ethan count? I definitely say so. Most hotels do crappy Kona, but this place has the real deal. Still, there is only one way to really experience Hawaii, you know. Oh, I'm sure you're going to tell us. Oh, and how's that? On the back of a surfboard, of course. Actually, surfing... Sounds amazing. It's always looked like so much fun just riding along the crest of a wave. No worries, no cares. See, you get it. It doesn't matter if you're an expert or a beginner. When you're on the wave, nothing can touch you. Well, why don't you figure out how to stand up, at least? Me, I would grab a surfboard and float on my back and just enjoy the sight of the sky. Sure, there's a learning curve and things you have to think about, but you'll get the hang of it. You, uh, sort of just have to throw yourself into it. You can't just be afraid of the wave, you just have to ride it. You know, we've got some free time before lunch. I could show you my favorite surfing spot, maybe give you a few pointers. 
It's a very hands-on teaching process, if you know what I mean. Oh, I'm sure. I, I'm not sure I understand precisely. Could you give me a little demonstration? For the love of... We, okay, everybody bitches about, you know, Ethan being thrown at you. We didn't even pick a choice with this dude. And... Eyes darkening with desire, he takes a step towards you, skimming his hand over the barrier of your skin or back. His touch sends a shiver of desire through you. Just then I'm happy to help you find the right positions on the board, that is. I think I'm starting to understand you now. Catch a wave with uh, rice and learn to surf. I'd love to. I figure why not, I actually enjoy this book. Amazing. Until uh, you see the beach. It's stupidly awesome. Touch me anymore to kick you in the nuts. You and Bryce make your way out to the beach. <laughs> About a half an hour out of town. Crystal clear surf pounds on pristine white sands and you gasp. Oh my god, Bryce, it's gorgeous. This is my favorite beach on the island. And best of all, it's off the beaten path, so we locals have it all to ourselves. I used to come here surfing all the time as a teenager. It's good to see it hasn't changed a bit. Your old stomping grounds, huh? Is it weird to uh, being back here? Not as weird as you think. Guess you'd take the boy off the island and not the island out of the boy. When was the last time you were here? This beach? At least four or five years ago. I don't uh, make it back to the island all that often. I've got to say, though, this trip has reminded me how much uh, there is to love about this place. It seems like a beautiful place to call home, I got to say. Let's start the lesson. To begin, we'll get the hang of things on the sand, then we'll take it to the water once you're used to it. First up is your paddling form. Lie face down, or face first on the board. Do the crawl. One arm on uh, each side of the board. Like this? That's the idea. Now, when you catch a wave, you don't want to pop up too soon. Give it another paddle or two before popping up. And don't try to get in or get up on in the first fast motion. First do a push up, then bring one foot forward between your arms, then the other, like so. He demonstrates on his own board, pushing himself up, sliding one foot forward, and then the other, and getting to his feet easily. I suspect you made that look way easier than it actually is. It's not that bad. You just have to remember not to actually kneel on the board. Otherwise, it's hard to get up. Which foot should I put forward first? The left one, or predominantly whichever one you have better balancing on. Ah, uh, depends if you're using goofy or regular stands. Goofy or what? Most people have their left foot in front. Goofy's stance is reverse. Neither is better or worse. It's just a preference thing. I think I'll be able to figure it out. Um, if I try both stance. I stand one way and then the other way. Is this supposed to feel different somehow? What did he just say? One thing that might help if it, is if you're wearing, uh, imagine wearing socks and sliding across the tile floor. Which foot are you starting with? My right. Hmm, left foot first, I think. Then you'd probably, uh, then you're probably regular stance. Okay, so left foot forward, right back, center of gravity over the board. Like this? If you like wiping out, you've got to crouch down a little bit, bend the legs, loosen up. He demonstrates pursing your lips, you follow his example. How's that? Perfect. Now all you have to do is be able to spring into that position from lying down. Uh, yeah, no biggie. Don't worry, you'll get used to it, I promise. Rice runs you through the various positions and phases, paddling, getting up, balancing on the board several times on the sand before he seems satisfied. Alright, are you ready to take all that onto the water? You tell me, Teach. In that case, learn by doing. The water's warm, the waves are good, and you're 99% safe from drowning. What about the last 1%? That's what I'm here for. Now come on, let's get out of here. Once you're tethered to your board, you carry it and follow Bryce into the shallow surf and out onto the waves. Bryce cuts through the water like he has, was born there. You're a bit less graceful, but you manage to paddle out easily enough to where Bryce eventually stops. Alright, 
we should uh, be getting a swell soon. And look, even if all you do is paddle, it's fine. Just give it a go. Start paddling. Give it a go. All right, paddling. The deceptively still water swells behind you as you paddle forward. And you feel the force of it begin to nudge you forward. Keep paddling. Wait until you got some momentum. You keep going, and to your excitement, you begin to pick up speed. Even as you feel the waves begin to pull you into its toe. Now I need to... Bring one foot forward, and then the other. Okay, push up, then left foot forward, then right. It's a bit slow and awkward, but somehow you manage to get into position, and for a brief moment... Yes, yes, that's it, you're doing it! Oh my god, I'm surfing! And before face plan. And sure enough, you find yourself gliding along the top of a wave, speeding towards the shore as you balance on the board. So cool, so... Whoa! The wave crests in your effort to adjust, you overbalance and tumble off the board and through the waves. When you get to the surface, you hear Bryce applauding excitedly and cheering your name. You did it, Casey. That was great. Oh, wow. That was so much fun. But I only managed it for a few seconds. Congratulations. You do more than most people do in their lifetimes. Hey, sometimes those few seconds are enough to make it the whole thing worth it. Here, let's get you back on your board. Treading water, Bryce holds your board steady and gives you a boost as you clamber back on, catching your breath. Well, I consider that uh, my rite of passage, my first full wipeout. That was no wipeout. Wiping out is the only way you really learn how to surf well. There's no point in getting nervous about it. It's like I said earlier, you can't be afraid of the wave. Going in tense is pretty much a guarantee of failure. Mm, don't be afraid of the wave, huh? That's, uh... Hmm. Something you should tell Surgeon Bryce. What do you mean? Bryce, be honest. You've been a bundle of nerves ever since that mix-up in surgery earlier this year. You're usually f falling over yourself to show off and take the hard cases, but now... Isn't it good to be more cautious after something like that? Sure, but this is more than caution. It's like you're anxious that you're gonna fail again. That you're letting it keep you from trying. But, like you said, you can't be afraid of the wave or wiping out. You just have to do it. Surgery isn't serving, Casey. Lives are at stake. Oh man, look at his mentality change. That's why you can't let your nerves take over. It'll paralyze you. And technically, remember he did freeze up during surgery. Bryce sinks on that silently for a moment, looking off towards the horizon as he bobs in the waves. Finally, he sighs. I suppose I have been afraid of the wave lately. I keep thinking more about the wipeout than what I have to do, if you know what I mean. Thanks for helping me see it, Casey. I'm not sure the fix is as simple as with surfing, but the first step is knowing what you're up against. If you really want to thank me, how about uh, some help catching the next wave? Sure thing. Just line up next to me and uh, we'll start paddling together for the next wave, okay? You follow Bryce's lead as the next well comes moves towards you, paddling in time with him as the wave picks up. Now push up, left foot, right foot. Push up, left foot, right foot. Sure enough, a little muscle memory kicks in and you manage to get to your feet and wobble your way into something like a surfing position. Bryce slaps beside you. You're getting it. Good job. This is the guy who's making it look easy. I mean, you heard the old saying, sucking at something is the first step to being sort of good at something. Now come on, turn into the... You may see the end of his instructions as overbalancing again, you wipe out and sink beneath the waves. Ah, uh, well, practice makes perfect. It's true. After another hour in the waves, you head back to the hotel drenched, sore and very happy. Later, you reconvene in the lobby with your roomies, Raph, and an exuberant Bryce. Awesome. Now that you're all here, I've got big plans for us. Uh, let me guess. You've got a heist planned, and we're just a team to do it? Nah, that'll be next trip, man. Today I'll be taking you to the hands down the best poke shake shack on the island. That's your big plan? When you texted, it sounded like you were suggesting a religious experience. Trust me, Jackie. You'll be a believer once you taste it. That's what she said. <laughs> Oh, wow, the details for the menu is actually pretty up there. 
Bryce brings you to what looks like a convenience store. The decor is simple, but dozens of locals are there ordering bowls. Welcome to Poka. This place is a legend with the locals. And it has a Poka stop, too. <sniffs> it's so bare bones, like Poke meets Dive Bar. You really get me, Lahaley. Wow, there are so many things on the menu, I don't even know where to begin. See, I'm having the opposite problem. I kind of want all of it. I can order for everyone if you want. Trust me, I spent years learning the best options. Mm, sounds perfect. You all tell Bryce your general preferences, leaving him to order. A few minutes later, he returns with loaded tray. You all take your first bites. Bryce, this is incredible. Please tell me there's a way I can eat this every day. You're so busy with your food, you don't even notice who's just coming to the shop. Hey, bro. Kiki, you made it. Leaping from the table, he envelops his sister in a bear hug, lifting her off the ground. She hugs him back tightly and then notices you at the table. Casey, good to see you again. Keeping my brother out of trouble. You know that's not possible. But forget him. How's boarding school? Really great, actually. The kids there are super nice, and for once, I'm actually interested in what the teachers are talking about. Are you staying out of trouble? Mostly. Spoken like a true Lahaley. But what are you doing in Hawaii? We're on school break. Lucky for me, it overlapped with y'all being here, so Bryce and I figured we should at least meet up. I'm really glad you made it, sis. Here, let me get you. Bryce suddenly cuts off as a woman walks in just behind Kiki. She's well-dressed, fretful, and based on the family resemblance, clearly Bryce and Kiki's mother. She sees Bryce and her eyes lighten and light up and sadden. Bryce tenses, forcing a blank look on his face and leaning forward to talk to Kiki in an undertone. Kiki, what is she doing here? I invited her. Okay, next question. What do you think you're doing inviting her here? Like it or not, Bryce, she's the only mother we've got. Whatever she and Dad did, we can't exactly trade them in for different models. Yes, you can. No, seriously, yes, you can. Don't give me that bullshit. I hate that. Oh, they gave birth to you, so clearly you must accept them. No, I don't accept that, and you shouldn't either if you're dealing with bad parents. So what? Now we're inviting them to poke and making up like everything's okay? They defrauded our friends and neighbors, Kiki. They took advantage of people who trusted them just for money. Everything isn't okay. Not yet. But they're making an effort, and we're trying to repair our relationship. Then you do you. Leave me the hell out of him. I would just thought that maybe it was time for you to do the same. Bryce glances at his mother, who's still waiting in the doorway, wringing her hands nervously. His jaw clenches, and he hesitates. <sighs> <laughs> Bryce, you don't have to play nice. Your parents hurt you and Kiki. You get to be mad about that, and you don't have to hide it or apologize for it. Thanks, Casey. I appreciate you having my back, but I think Kiki might be right. At least about hearing her own. He walks over to his mother, who straightens up. Judging by her expression, she clearly knows Bryce is unhappy to see her, but to her credit, she faces him calmly. Mom, what are you doing here? I... I came to see you. Well, I don't particularly want to see you right now, so... Oh, didn't you just say Kiki may be right to hearing her out, but yet you answer like that? You hypocritical mother. That's fair. I just wanted to say something. Bryce glances over at Kiki, who nods pleadingly, and he sighs. Fine, say your piece. I'm so... So sorry for everything your father and I did, not just because it was wrong, but because it hurt you and your sister. Your father never meant to get in so deep, but the money was so much more than we'd ever had before, and no one se seemed to get hurt. After that, things just seemed to slip out of control, and before we knew it, police were knocking at the door. Yeah, I remember that part pretty clearly. I know you do, and that's the worst part. We always told ourselves that you and Kiki were safe, that no matter what, you wouldn't get hurt. But of course, you ended up getting hurt most of all. I'll never forget myself. Forgive myself for how it affected you. She tries to say more, but just despite her efforts, she tears up and starts crying. Bryce watches her for a moment, and then he makes a choice. Come here, Mom. Mm. 
He pulls her into a hug. It's very awkward and stiff, but clearly sincere. His mother pulls him close, burying her face in her sh oh, his shoulder. She composes herself. Eventually, they part. Mom, this doesn't mean we're okay. We have a lot of trust to rebuild. But I guess this means I'm willing to try to do it. Miss LaHaley's eyes widen and then wells up with tears. You can tell she's about to become emotional again, and based on the tense, awkward look on Bryce's face, he can tell too. Mm, I'm gonna help him, because he said have my back. Help diffuse the tension. Hey Bryce, is this your mom? I can see the resemblance. It's lovely to meet you, Miss LaHaley. The three LaHaley's start in surprise as you approach. Bryce gives you an immensely grateful look, relaxing immediately, and his mother quickly composes herself and smiles. Lovely to meet one of Bryce's friends. You're Casey, am I right? I heard about you from Geeky. Only good things, I hope. Mostly. Here, Mom, why don't you take a seat? I'll get you uh, and Kiki something neat and introduce you to my friends. I'm so uh, glad you said that, because I honestly need some poke stat. Her wry tone breaks the tension, and everyone breaks into laughter. I need some poke stat. Yep. I have a meme for what that means, but we'll, we'll move on. After finishing your poke and saying goodbye to Bryce's family, you'll head back to the hotel to get ready for Enos's wedding. This is Inez. She was the one of my first mentors at the hospital, and she's always been so supportive. I want a dress to celebrate her. <laughs> okay. Plus, what's more romantic than a beachside wedding? A wedding in general? Pick a stunning look for Inez's beachside wedding ceremony. You notice how they always say pick, but we don't get to pick. We only get one outfit, and it's something that's just reskinned, and we can tell. I've been waiting for an opportunity to show this outfit off. What better occasion than a wedding? Which reminds me, I better head down to the beach. Things will be starting soon. Oh, wow. A stretch of beach near the hotel has been transformed into a beautiful ceremony venue. Casey, over here! Spots Anna and your friends in the front row. As you make your way through the rows, you notice several guests turn and stare appreciatively at your outfit. Bryce makes a low whistle, and Raph gives a big grin and a thumbs up. You, you look absolutely st amazing. Oh my god, the validity of needing to change an outfit in this game. Careful, you might outshine the brides in them. I highly doubt that, but I couldn't let Inez think this day wasn't special to me too. We literally... Who here actually has feelings for Inez like a friend, a mentor, anything whatsoever since playing this book? Seriously, let me know. No one will think that. I think you've single-handedly elevated the entire ceremony's style points, and yet I like your outfit more. You made it just in time. I heard they're planning to start really soon. Now soon enough, the music's starting up. There's a brief scramble as everyone takes their seats in time to see Inez and her fiancé, Angie, both beaming as they walk down the sandy aisle arm in arm. They both look so beautiful. Oh my god, I'm already tearing up. I always cry at weddings. Deanna, we only just started. Pace yourself. You're not alone. I think Zade's crying. <laughs> what? I hope he can make it through the ceremony. Moments later, they stop in front of Zade, who clears his throat nervously. When Inez asked me to uh, officiate, I asked if I could uh, keep things simple and brief. Just do you, do you good. You're, you're married. Kiss. Unfortunately, she would inform me that I had to get a little more elaborate than that. He knows Angie and all the guests laugh while you lean over to jack and whisper into your breath. Honestly... Mm, I guess. I like longer ceremonies. Besides, look at how beautiful this place is. Why wouldn't you want to savor the romance of the moment and take your time? Hey, some people like to get the good stuff uh, quickly, or get to it, especially when it involves kissing. Mm-hmm. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here today to witness the wedding of Inez De La Rosa and Angela McKinnon. I think I speak for all of us when I say I'm both honored and overjoyed to be here, marrying my best friend to the woman she loves. Thank you. The brides have prepared vows that the, they will now share with each other. Smiling, Inez and Angie take uh, each other's hands and gaze in each other's eyes. Angie, I promise to love you and cherish you. I promise not to skip ahead on your favorite shows, to know exactly how you like your ex, and to always be at your side. 
from now until forever. You know, as I promise to celebrate how you make me smile, how your nose crinkles when you concentrate, how you finally learned how to cook an egg. And most of all, celebrate how you will fill my life with joy and love and every day from now until forever. All right, Enos, take the ring, put it on her finger and answer me. Do you, Enos, take Angie to be your wife? I do. Angie, your turn. Do you take Enos to be your wife? You bet I do. Then, by the power vested in me, I pronounce you married. The two of you may now kiss. Smiling, Enos and Angie lean together and kiss each other tenderly. Everyone cheers and starts throwing rice. A waste of rice. Just a waste. Mm, take photos to remember the moment. Pull out your phone and capture some beautiful candid snaps of Enos and Angie kissing, then falling into each other's arms and laughing. Those are really sweet. You should send them to Inez after we get back. I bet she'd love to have them. I'm sure she has a professional photographer taking better pictures. I bet she'd still love to see your candidates, plus different angle. Let's move the, down the beach for the reception and really get this party started. The reception area is filled with music activities from bars to buffet tables to a photo booth to dancing. Where should I even start? Ah, looks like we have quite a few choices. Let's see what we got. Visit the photo booth. Congratulate Enos. Grab some champagne with Elijah. Hit the dance for him. Sure, we're going to be able to do all four, hopefully. First of all, congratulate the bride. Duh. Once you spot an opening, you make your way over to Enos and Andre. Congratulations, both of you. I just wanted to wish you all the best. Oh, Casey, thank you for coming and for pulling out all the stops. You look absolutely stunning tonight. Angie, I don't think you've met Casey. She was one of my interns when I was resident. Wonderful to meet you, Casey. It's good to finally put some faces to the names I keep hearing about. Isn't that awkward? Like I said, this is how little we know about Inez. This is why I have no emotional attachment to this whatsoever. Likewise, I'm curious, how did you two meet? Would you believe we met over her taxes? Wait, what? Angie's an accountant at the firm I use. My regular accountant was sick, so Angie subbed in for one of my appointments. Apparently, my fiery arguments over tax write-off convinced her to ask me out for coffee. What can I say? Anyone that's passionate about tax codes had to be a pretty passionate person in general. Well, she's cute. Wow, this is such a story. It's funny. I'd always thought you'd wind up with someone at the hospital, he knows. Not a chance. I know better than the crap where I eat. Wow, what a way. And she bursts out in a hysterical laugh as Enos claps a hand over her mouth. Sorry, that was vivid. I think all the excitement and bubbly is going to my head. Please don't tell anyone I said that. Oh no, we're telling everyone. Said what? I didn't hear anything. You're right, Enos. You've got some very great students. Just as great as our teacher. Hmm. Aw, Angie. He smiles, exchange a sweet kiss. Make your selection. Take a break. Hmm. That's at the photo booth. We'll do all of them. This is one of those non-diamond scenes I would skip. You approach the photo booth where a table has been piled with novelty props, headgear, Tobias and Harper are already there. She's holding a mask to her a clown wig into his other hand. Come on, Harper. Just for these next shots. Tobias, for the last time, I am not about to wear a clown nose. I'm perfectly happy with the photos we took. Casey, just in time. We're taking some team photos to commemorate the mo event. Team photos, huh? Don't we uh, need to get Ethan over here as well, then? I'm a photo booth purist, Casey. Either wear the silliest accessories or don't talk in this curtain. Does this, uh, that does rule Ethan out. I mean, I want a picture with both of you, obviously. If it's a team photo, you've got to have the whole team. Well, except, uh, Ethan, I guess. That's such bull. That's, mm. What are you going to wear for the photo, Casey? You take a quick look at what's available and then light up as you pick up a cowboy hat and a massive handlebar mustache on a stick. 
just call me Casey the Kid. Outlaw extraordinaire. Joel Paul into the boot, Tobias in the clown wig, Harper striking an exaggerated, pouty lipped pose beneath a Venetian mask. All right, varmints, draw on the count of three, two, one. You dissolve in a laughter as you see the photo flash on the screen, then I'll file out of the booth. I'm trying to come up with our team theme here, but I'm lost. I've seen stranger teams at the hospital, believe me. The photo booth prints out the photo, Tobias snatches it before you and Harper can grab it, he takes one, and then bursts into laughter and shows it off. Oh my god, that's perfect. We should blow that up and frame it on the wall of the office. I have a better idea. Let's print out some copies for us to keep. Sounds perfect. I'm gonna want to remember this night forever. Yeah, except we discluded Ethan. Wow. Like, let's put it this way. I know we may be sticks in the mud sometimes, but we do like to cut loose with people who are endeared, dearing to us. Okay? Just saying. We actually have a fun side. You might want to get to know it. You show me your way onto the packed dance floor, moving and twisting along with the thumping beat of the music. You notice Bass, Anna, and Aurora dancing together, and you make your way over. Hey, room for one more in the dance party? Oh, in that outfit? We will make room for you, Casey! Casey has always cleaned up well. Just be warned, Baz's dancing gets pretty exuberant. It doesn't look as cool if you hold back, you know? I don't know about looking cool, but that's not the point of dancing, as far as I'm concerned. It's true. Right on. Let's cut loose, Baz. All right, time to tear it up. Baz starts dancing all out, exuberant, doesn't even begin to describe it. His arms and legs fly in every direction, and his hips wiggle on triple speed. Still, he's clearly having the time of his life and laughing. You follow along. What do we call this dance? I call it Drop the Bass. What do you think? How oh, hot new dance craze? I'd watch a TikTok of this for sure. You both throw yourselves totally into the music, gyrating wildly with arms and legs everywhere. Go oh, Baz, go Casey, you're killing it. Just don't flail too violently or you'll end up actually killing something. Laughing, Baz and you high five and continue to drop the Baz. Before long, the song continues, or changes. Oh my gosh, I know what dance we need to do. Oh no, please don't tell me what I think it is. Kunga line, come on everyone! Baz and Sienna immediately jump into the formation, Baz leading the way with Sienna and grabbing his shoulders, rolling her eyes, but grinning, Aurora quickly follows suit, and you laugh as you grab her shoulders as well. It's not a wedding without at least one cheesy group dance, let's do it. The four of you dance in formation around the dance floor, other dancers joining in until the whole floor is one massive conga line. You move, keep moving in tandem around the floor until the song is over. Grab some champagne with Elijah. You make your way over the champagne table where Naveen and Elijah are having an animated conversation. And the first test definitely showed an improvement in sensation as well as mobility. And with that dose... Oh, hey, Casey. Ah, Casey. I've been meaning to tell you how wonderful you look tonight. That outfit is pretty incredible. Oh, for the love of God, stop flattering. I figured I had to go all out for Enos. Elijah was telling me about the latest program with his research. I must say I'm impressed. Oh, do you have exciting news, Elijah? You could say that. Over 80% of the test subjects responded to the treatment, and we're pretty sure we can increase that number as we tweak the dosage. You should be proud of yourself, Elijah. Breakthroughs like this are rare indeed. It really is huge, Elijah. You deserve to celebrate. And I can think of a no better place to let loose and do that at a wedding in paradise. I mean, it's just preliminary work, but uh, there's a long way to go before we can change the world and all that. I think what Casey's trying to say is enjoy the victories, small and large, where you can. Exactly. A toast to Elijah and his amazing study. Elijah beams at you, and you beam right back. Well, I had some great friends who helped me along the way. I will say I'm surprised you've heard about the study, Naveen. Giving Inbrook running must take up so much of your time. A study this compelling deserves the attention. Which reminds me, I've been wanting to ask about your methodology. You leave the two of them still talking shop, and Elijah beaming as Naveen asks more engrossing questions about his work. 
Later, you've filled your plate at the buffet and are moving over to a table to eat when you hear a telltale clink-clink of someone tapping a wine glass. If I could have everyone's attention for a moment, uh, please, I'd like to say a few words. You grab a seat at one of your tables with the rest of your friends. Oh boy, this should be good. The man with a heart of stone is going to give a wedding speech? I can't wait. Just because he's professionally a heart of stone doesn't mean he doesn't have a heart. No sarcasm allowed. Jackie, I'm very unironically uh, into wedding speeches. Can't be as much as I'm into this roast pork. Taking a deep breath, Zade raises his glass to Inez and Angie at the couple's table. On the first day of my residency, I expected to meet some really stupid patients. And I did. I expected to meet some really pompous and incompetent doctors, and I did. What I didn't expect was to meet the kindest, sweetest, most amazing doctor I'd ever known, and best friend I'd ever have. Oh, Zade. See, we do have hearts. Us men, but, you know... I always knew you needed a big brain to be a good doctor. Inez is one who taught me that. To be a great doctor, you also have to have a big heart. Inez visibly wells up at his words. Beside you, Aurora quietly takes one of Sienna's tissues and dabs at the corner of her eyes, which looks suspiciously shiny. Why is it suspiciously shiny? They say that marriage is a partnership and the love, real love, is about having each other's backs. I always thought that was stupid cliché. But today is proof that it isn't just a cliché, it's real. And I'm so glad my best friend found it. Oh my god, is he tearing up? Sure enough, Zade's poker face cracks and he gets choked up before he can continue. I can't think of anyone more deserving of that love than you, Inez. So here's to both of you. And to love. He lifts his glass, and the rest of his guests burst in thunderous applause, clapping for Zade and lifting the glasses to the happy couple. Inez jumps up and hugs him, Angie not far behind her. Here, here. Wow, that was so sweet. I know, I'm almost started bawling all over again. That was one of the most heartfelt talks about love I've ever heard. I almost wish I'd been taking notes. To be honest, if someone started talking that passionately about love on a first date, I'd be up for a second one. Huh. Really, I'd run for the hills, and these are the women I keep meeting right here. Wiping her eyes, Inez takes the mic. Thank you so much, Zade, and thank you all for being here. Please have a wonderful time, stock up on wedding cake, and enjoy the night. And with that in mind, DJ, play You're the Best. Zade, come on. Wait, what? Hang, hang on. Guests laugh as Inez drags a surprise aide out on the dance floor while Angie applauds and watches Inez with an adoring expiration. Oh man, I need to catch this on film. Your friends split off again as the party picks back up. It might be nice to grab a few moments alone with a special someone, even nicer with a piece of wedding cake in hand. Ah, there we go. Mm, I do really, really like her dress. Reasons, Ethan. You find Ethan, who we've ignored most of this book so far, or excuse me, this chapter. You find him exactly where you'd expect him to be, at the fringes of the party gazing out over the evening ocean. You look like a man who could use some cake. Oh, thank you. Exactly the thing to end the night with. Why, you don't want some Kona coffee, dog? Let's go! <laughs> Are you enjoying the party? More than I expected to, actually. Inez is one of the warmest people I know. I suppose it's uh, no surprise that her wedding is this joyful. Ethan smiles softly at you, turning back to the ocean as he takes a bite of the cake. There's something special about a wedding in a place like this. The romance is undeniable. Hmm, just the setting that has you feeling romantic? The setting helps, but I'd say the company is the most potent element. His lips curl as he takes you in, an undeniable flicker of danger in his eyes. I've been watching you all night, Casey. You're always magnetic. But in that outfit, well, you're radiant. Feeling something in you stir, you glance over the party, the laughing faces, music all blending together. It's definitely a special night. Head back to the hotel with Ethan for a steamy, intimate night in paradise. Leave with Ethan. Like your suit. It's all black. You dig me.
Or may I say, you get me. Ethan, as lovely as this party is, would you like to turn in early? Uh, specifically, with me in my suite? Ethan raises an el elegant eyebrow. Elegant eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? He holds your case for a long, smoldering moment, then deliberately puts his plate of cake down. Lead the way. The huskiness of his voice makes you shiver. He knows what you want. He wants to, too. Wordlessly, you take him by the hand and lead him back in a hotel. The atmosphere is electric with anticipation as you and Ethan return to your room, your fingers clumsy with eagerness as you fumble open the door. Ethan hasn't touched you yet, but the dark, smoldering glimmer in his eyes makes you weak in the knees. Now that we're alone... He slowly loosens his tie and slips it from his neck, his fingers flexing around the silk as he holds your gaze. Somehow, it's the hardest thing you've ever seen. You realize I've been thinking of this moment the entire evening, don't you? Good. That means I'm not the only one. Chuckling, he crosses into the bathroom to fill the jacuzzi tub, and when he looks back at you, his eyes are hooded with desire. That should take a few minutes, enough to get comfortable, if you will. I'm guessing that means it's time to get rid of these pesky clothes? Hmm, you said it, not me. As much as I love you in that outfit, there's one thing I think suits you even better. I'll say no more. He unbuttons his cuff slowly, one at a time, building the anticipation as his hands move up to release the first button of his collar. Wait a little minute. Let me help you. He raises an eyebrow in that maddening, enticing way he has, and slowly smiles as he lowers his hands. Taking a deep breath, you step forward and begin unfastening the button at his throat, relishing the heat and closeness of him. His lips are right there. Casey. You lean up and capture his lips and yours, kissing him, relishing the soft exhalation of pleasure. As you kiss, your hands finally undo the next button, and the next one, and the next one, until you break away from the breathless with a breathless smile. You're going to make me do the rest myself. Never. You slide his shirt and coat off his shoulders, palms stroking indulgently over his bare chest and muscles before you go to work on his belt. You kiss him again before holding his gaze and sliding his pants down over his hips, your hands tracing the hard muscles of his thighs. I think the water's ready. I'm guessing you're not planning to hop in wearing that. Mm, couldn't risk damaging the fabric. You quickly slip out of your wedding finery and follow Ethan to the bathroom, where the jacuzzi tub is full and steamy. He pulls out a hand and helps you in, and follows you sliding into the water with a moan of pleasure. You sigh as you sink into the wonderful, warm embrace of the bubbles and jets. So, is this the main event for the evening? Because I wouldn't complain. As nice as this is, no, it's not what I had in mind, but I wouldn't mind prolonging the moment. Mmm, like with a glass of champagne? You might have suggested we grab that before we got in the hot tub. What, and deprive myself of the sight of you getting out of the tub, naked, dripping, and to grab us some glasses? Chuckling, Nathan good-naturedly climbs out of the tub and heads to the drink car. You enjoy the view as he pours, as well as he turns and comes back with glasses in hand. You look like the cat that ate the canary. What can I say? I really like champagne. Shaking his head in amusement, he slides back into the water beside you, handing you a glass. Between Inez and Angie, the architects of this wonderful evening. Inez and Angie. You raise your glass, clink it against his, then drink deeply as you swallow, you smile seductively. I think we deserve a toast ourselves. To you, Ethan, for making this evening even more exciting. Ethan raises an eyebrow in interest and raises his glass to you, eyeing you intently over the rim. And to you, Casey, for reminding me of the real pleasures in life. You shiver at the way he says pleasures, still holding your gaze. He drinks from his glass and lowers it. Oh, Ethan, you've got a... You point to his lower lip where a large droplet of champagne still lingers. Usually, he's so meticulously about such things, but he smirks, cocking an inviting eyebrow at you, and you realize... It was a very, very deliberate. Here, let me get that for you. He leaned forward and captured the droplet and Ethan's willing lips in your own. Ethan's mouth against yours in a firm dominant domination and your breath catches in your throat as the pleasure of it seems to flow through your entire body. 
Hmm. Ethan. Shh. Ethan pulls you onto his lap, pressing his lips to yours again. You can feel his desire as you press your body down against his. Casey. You silence him with your mouth and you can feel his desire and yours growing. I want to feel your mouth on me. You realize I don't have gills, correct? You'll have to make every moment count. With you, that's always a given. Laughing, you lean back against the seat of the jacuzzi and part your legs, smirking. Ethan kneels between your legs, the heat from him warmer than the water. Then he delves beneath the surface, the bubbles obscuring him from other than a shadowy shape moving closer. Ethan, are you... You gasp in surprise and pleasure as Ethan's mouth nuzzles against your core, his lost lips soft and knowing on your body. Suddenly the sensation is gone again, but you don't even have time to whine before his lips are on you again. First a gentle brush, then a long, lingering touch. With all the bubbles obscuring your view, you can't tell where or how he's moving. And when the next touch come will come, you can only let the sensation wash over you. You lean back and close your eyes, sighing and moaning with each touch of his mouth until finally he surfaces flicking his hair back and panting slightly. Looks like that left us both out of our breath. Laughing, you push him back onto the far seat, straddling him eagerly. Ethan kisses you ravishly as you grind against him, rocking your hips in a slowly escalating rhythm. He wraps his arms around you, pulling you flush against him, body sliding against each other. I want you right now. Tell me what you want, Casey. I need you right here. Without hesitation, you angle your hips and plunge down on him, gasping at the intense pleasure as he slides back home. Ethan throws his head back, ridding his teeth at the sensation. God, it feels so good. You feel so good. Unable to respond coherently in the moment, you begin rocking against him. Small, quick movements that send you a pulse of pleasure where your body meets him. Don't stop, Casey. I want to watch you. He, cu he cuts off with a moan as you ride him all the harder, his own hips rocking against you. The warm water jets rushes around you and over your already sensitive skin, threatening to overwhelm you. Your head lolls back from pleasure. Look at me, Casey. You open barely lust-fogged eyes to meet Lyethan's piercing hot gaze. Don't look away. Let me see you. Rolling his hips under the water, he thrusts against you, slowly but powerfully, never breaking his heated or hungry gaze from your face. Looking at him, at his damp lips and flushed cheeks and piercing eyes, you feel the pleasure about to overwhelm you. Ethan, I can't hold on. Then don't, just let go. He moves even deeper, faster, his body hungrier for you. You roll against him, needing him and only him. Casey, I'm so close. You arch your back as explosions of pleasure rock you to the core, claims Ethan as well, his hips driving his doors as he cries out in satisfaction. And then it's over. You slump in each other's arms, both gasping for air and smiling. Whew, that was... good? I was thinking more like... magical. You lean against Ethan and then tub your head on his chest, listening to his heartbeat as the warm water Susan lulls you into a dreamlike state. Ethan chokes your arm soothingly and you're about to doze, drift off into a doze when he sighs softly. Casey, I've never felt this way about anyone, and I don't know if I ever will again. I might feel the same way. You tilt your head up and meet his gaze. I feel the same way about you, Ethan. Smiles at you, and you feel a little tension ease out of him. I don't know why it took me so long to tell you that, especially when you, you, hearing you say it back sounds so lovely. He smiles, and he leans down to capture your lips in his own. He can't help but savor the soft sound he makes in the back of his throat. The kiss is soft, gentle, deep, reaching down to something deeper inside you that makes you whimper a little. Ethan breaks away briefly. Are you all right? Better than all right. I'm glad. Forgive me, I'm not used to just these sorts of moments. And I'm not the best at putting feelings into words. Then don't. Just be with here, me here tonight. You kiss him back, softly first, then more with more adore, a arcing his embrace. 
It's not long before the room is filled with soft gasps, sighs again, the two of you moving together in perfect rhythm once more. The next morning, you and the rest of the crew head to the airport, enjoying your last moments of paradise before heading back to chilly Boston. Chilly, pfft, yeah, okay, it's like 60-some right now. It's actually really nice. Phew, that was a night. I think I'm going to sleep the whole flight home. Really? I slept like a log. It's, uh, those island breezes, man. I'm telling you, we should bottle them and sell them as sleep aids. I can't believe the trip is over so soon. It feels like we just got here. Actually, we did just get here. We've only been here for two days, after all. It feels like one. And now we're back to the grind. I can already tell I'm gonna be miserable at work tomorrow morning. How about you, Casey? <laughs> Honestly, I'm eager to get back. This trip has been really rejuvenating. I feel like I'm going to get you know, my next shift all fresh and recharged and ready to work. And I thought I was a type A. I know what you mean. It's nice to take a break and come back to things with fresh eyes. Well, these eyes will be missing palm trees and beaches. Don't worry, your Hawaii time isn't over yet. I've got one last local surprise for you all. What kind of local surprise is there at an airport, of all places? We didn't get the... The thing that goes around your neck with the flowers. Only the best Kona coffee around. God damn it! It's good enough that locals sometimes come to the airport just for the morning coffee. Oh my god. Yes, caffeine, please. Make that two, no three. Your friends all chime in with orders for Kona or caffeinated beverages while Bryce quickly jots things down. Alright, even these guns aren't going to be able to carry all that coffee. Any volunteers to help me carry? I'll help. It would be uh, good to move my legs a bit before we get on the plane. The two of you walk off down the concourse, leaving your friends at the gate. Beautiful wedding, huh? I'll say, Hawaii gets a lot of these, uh, a lot of things right, and one of them is beach weddings, and that one was really special. Are they also romantic and chill? If only, at my friend Riku's wedding, they cooked traditional palu pig, but uh, our buddy puts fireworks in with the coals as a joke, and he gets off by his phone, beeping with a text, smiling. He takes his phone out to check, then stops dead in his tracks, his face stricken. Oh no. Bryce, what's wrong? Remember that incredibly complicated, dangerous surgery my friend Henry was trying to get me to do for him? The one no other hospital would take on? Sure, for his spinal bifida. So, what about a... Apparently, it's just the sort of procedure the new Edenbrook wants to tackle. And my attending has assigned me to be the part of the team. Your time in paradise is on the end, but on the horizon for you and your friends back at the hospital. Keep playing to find out. Thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description below. Links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content. And without further ado, I hope you all really did enjoy the content that I do. If you do, please make sure to like and share the video. Also, let me know what you thought down in the comments section below. And if you want to continue seeing such great, incredible content, as well as I've been covering the RE series, please check that out. Um, the two and three remakes are, have been up on the channel, or excuse me, remasters have been up on the channel. Uh, channel for a while now but we are starting to cover four five will be up shortly and then we'll be doing six so do keep that in mind because village will be coming out real soon and without further ado thanks for watching catch you all later peace out